Welcome to part 5 of my Geometry Nodes for Beginners Blender tutorial series. So if you haven't seen the previous parts, then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So in the last part, we finished the Geometry Node flowers, and I showed you how you can use the Curve Draw feature to actually draw where you want the flowers to be. And in this part, we are going to create some customizable values here on the side panel so that you can control many values of the flower. And if you'd like to purchase the project files and get this Blender file here with the finished Geometry Nodes flower setup, you can find the links to that in the description. Now real quick before we start, I wanted to let you know about an amazing Blender add-on for creating realistic landscapes. With the Terrain Scapes add-on, you can create your own custom landscapes. Start by adding a terrain, and then you can load different mountain presets. You can also combine different layers of mountains on your terrain. The detail levels of the mesh is also customizable. The add-on also comes with material presets to add materials to your landscape like rock and snow to the mountains, and grass to the ground. The add-on also comes with many different biomes to add to your landscapes, like a mixed forest, jungle, rocky forest, bushes, and other biomes. You can also add different object layers, like rocks, grass, plants, and trees. You can find my full add-on review video with the link in the description, and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, you'll be helping to support this channel. So let's just select the flower object and then we'll go back over here to geometry nodes. Now I'm gonna open up the side panel by dragging this over here so that we can see the actual geometry node setup. Now to add the different custom values, we can take different values here that we wanna control and we can plug them up here to this group input. So you can see right down here, there is an extra dot here. And so we can actually add the values into the group input and it'll show up here on the modifier. So for example, let's say that we wanna change the scale of the flower. Well, if we go right over here to the end of the flower center and the petals, we have this transform geometry. And so these scale values can be used to change the flower. So what we can do is take the scale value and we can drag this over here to the group input and we can plug it up here to the extra socket. So when we plug it up to the extra socket, now you can see it's added it and right over here on the geometry nodes modifier, you can actually see the scale value. Now to edit these values further, you can press the N key to open the side panel and you can click right over here on the group tab. Now right here there is an interface and so you can actually rename the different values. So right here if I double click on this that will rename it and I can rename this to flower scale. So now you can actually see it says flower scale. Now there's a problem with this and that is that there are x, y, and z values and I instead just want to have one value which will control the entire scale. So to fix this we can change the type from a vector which is going to be the x, y, and z axis. We can change it instead to float by clicking right here on the type and float is just going to be one single value. Now this default value here, we want to turn this back to one, and then you can see that the flower is still disappeared. That's because it's scaled down to zero. So on the flower scale, we can just turn that to one. So now if we go back here to the layout, we don't have to even see the geometry nodes. We can just drag the flower scale value and that'll change the size of the flowers. So let's do that for many more values. So I'll go back here to the geometry nodes. Now I also want to be able to control the amount of petals. So let's go here to the petals and you can see that here's the petals and we transformed it and subdivided it and then we put it here in the instance on points and the mesh circle the vertices is going to have how many petals there are because if there are more vertices there's going to be more points so we can control this by clicking here dragging over we can drag it all the way over here and stick it in here and another way to do this is to actually just drag the group input closer and then plug it up so now you can see it says vertices but I instead want to double click on this and I'll rename it to petals amount so then right over here on the side panel, we have petals amount, and I can make more or less petals. Now I also want to control the center size. So if we go up here to the flower center, you can see right here, if I make this bigger, there is this radius bottom, and then there's also the radius top. And so we can change the radius top to make the size of that. So let's put the radius top here, plug that into the extra socket. And then if I double click on this to rename it, I can rename it to center size, or maybe flower center size. Now I also want to control the petals size, so we'll drag the group input down here, and then this cylinder, this is creating the petals. So this radius here, if I drag it bigger or smaller, that is going to change the size of the petals. So let's drag the radius right into here to the extra socket, and I can rename it to petals size. 
Now we can also change the petals length by going right over here to the instance on points and we can drag this X here and the Y and the Z. Now I really just want to control the X and the Y but I don't really care to control the Z. Now, instead of just plugging up the scale and having an X and Y value, I want to rename these different values. So what I want to do is break up the values into three different values. So there is a node for this. So if I click and drag the scale and then drop here and let go, I can search for the combine X, Y, Z. And here it is, combine X, Y, Z, and then it says vector. So let's click on this and drop it here. And I can actually maybe drag it right over here and then drag this down. So because we've added the combine X, Y, Z, we now have separate values for the X and the Y and the Z. And let's change these all back to one because one was the default. All right, so I can now take the X one, this will change the length, and let's drag that into the extra socket here. And then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename it to pedals length. Now the second one here, this Y one, that is going to change the thickness. So let's drag it over here, stick it into the extra socket, and I can rename this to Petals Thickness. Now you can see with these two values, there's this little button here, and I'll show you how to actually use this button. I'll show you what it does later in the tutorial series in the next part. But on these values here, I don't want to be able to see them. So if you select the petals length, you can click on single value and that'll get rid of it. And the petals thickness, click on that to get rid of it. And I will be explaining what that is later in the tutorial series. Now I also want to control the offset of the petals. So if I go back here to the mesh circle, this mesh circle is going to be where they are distributed. So if I drag this, it's going to change the offset. So let's drag the radius here into the extra socket, and I can rename this to petals offset. Now I also want to control the stem thickness. So if I go down here to the stem, you can see there's the curved circle and that is telling it what it's actually going to be going up the stem. So it's going to tell it the shape. And you can see there's this radius here to change the size of it. So let's put the radius there into that extra socket there. And I'll rename this to stem thickness. Now I also want to be able to control the amount of leaves. So if I zoom out here and go over here to the leaves on stem, we have this density factor. And so this will get rid of the leaves. So let's take the density factor and I will kind of drag it up here. You can move your mouse into the sides to move it over. Let's stick it here. And then I'll rename this to leaves amount. And then I also want to be able to control the seed just to generate a random seed. So this seed value will kind of generate where the leaves are. So let's drag this seed and stick it here into the extra socket and we can call it leaves seed. Then I want to be able to control the scale of the leaves. So if I go back here to the instance on points, we have the scale value to change the instances, so to change the size of the leaves. So we'll take the scale value and we're going to stick it here into the extra socket, and then I'll rename it to leaves scale. Now you can see right here, there are three values and I just want it to be one value. So just like we did earlier, we want to take the vector, which is X, Y, and Z. We're instead going to change that to float, which is just one value. And then the default value, we want to turn that to one. And then right here, the leave scale will turn that back to one so you can actually see it. Although actually one wasn't the default. So if I just unplug this real fast, it's 4.5. So I can press control Z. So then right here on the default, I want to turn this to a 0.45. And also the leave scale here changes to a 0.45. Now you can see there's also those buttons there that I want to hide. So click on single value, click on leaves amount, and then also choose single value just to hide that. Now I also want to control where the leaves start and where the leaves end. So if we go here to the trim curve, we have this here for where it starts, and then we also have this here for where it ends. So let's take the start, put that in the extra socket, and the end, put that into the extra socket. And then I'll just rename this to leaves start. And then this one here, I'll rename to leaves end. And then we can again click on single value on both of these. So click on them and click on single value. All right, let's save this again with control S. And then we can go back over here to the layout and we can see what these are doing. So now we have the flower scale. We also have the petals amount. We also have the flower center size and the petals size. And we have the petals length and the petals thickness and the petals offset. And then we also have the stem thickness, that's pretty cool. We also have the amount of leaves and the seed. And then we also have the leaves scale to make them bigger or smaller. We also have the leaves start and then also the leaves end. 
So this is super cool, and we now have this cool Geometry Nodes modifier, which is going to generate these flowers. So let's press Control S to save, and this will wrap it up for this part. This was a pretty quick part, but we are almost done with the tutorial series, so we just have one more part left, part 6. In part 6, I'm going to show you how to instance the flowers on a plane, so that you can kind of create like a little meadow scene with some different flowers on a plane. And I'm also going to be showing you how to weight paint on the plane, so that where you paint, the flowers are going to show up on the plane. So that'll be in the next part. So when the last part is released, it's going to be right up there on the end screen, and also I'll have the link in the description. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files of this tutorial to get this Blender file, you can also get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Links are in the description, and that's a great way to help support this channel. But I hope you enjoyed this, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the final part.